Hey there. Wencher. Dream Pen. I have reviewed a prototype of Wencher's Dream Pen uh, quite a while ago. There was a number of months ago. There was a Kickstarter project uh, which was interesting because they offered Urushi pens for a price that no one has ever offered Urushi pens for as far as I know. So it was quite a popular Kickstarter, a lot of people now. Uh, that was what I reviewed though, was a prototype. Now they have sent me the final version, uh, which is not an Urushi pen. In this case, this is just an Ebonite pen, but it was just so that I can show you the final product. I think what would make most sense if you're interested in this pen is to first watch my earlier video on the Wancha Dream Pen so you can see what the prototype was like and then you can see this pen in Ebonite, okay? Because there have been a couple of changes and I think they are mainly little functional changes in the capping mechanism, for example. But overall, it's mainly the same pen. Nevertheless, it'll be fun to show you this, so I'm going to show you the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But first of all, a very kind thank you to Wamcho for, of course, sending me this pen. Let's get cracking. Okay, so here we have that Wencha Dream Pen. Comes in a lovely little wooden box, very uh, Japanese, I would say. I like their logo. Uh, simple pens. As I said, there was this Kickstarter, and this is not the one of the Urushi models. This is just an Ebonite model. I'll show you the pen in just a second. What do you get? You get an instruction manual. Uh, you get the, uh, the the little business card, and you get some commercials for the new glass nib pen. Uh, you get, I'm assuming, yeah, a care care guide, QR code. That's kind of neat. You get some cartridges. They're in this little, very Japanese uh, paper bag. Uh, and then you have a little pen kimono, which is kind of neat. I mean, it is cool that you get that. Okay, so I'll show you the pen in a sec, but what was the whole joy in this? The whole joy in this was that these are pretty affordable Urushi pens, because you can have an Urushi pen for about $450 US, uh, which is not terrible, I would say, given that many Urushi pens start at about $1,000. Um, this, uh, I think, was 200 with steel nib, or 330 with a uh, 14K nib, and there isn't an 18 karat nib available at extra cost. But, as I said, this is not a Rushi. This is just Ebonite. Okay, so let's be clear about that. This is not black Rushi. As I have said, it's probably a good idea to watch my review of that prototype so you can see the differences. Now, the biggest difference I saw between the prototype and this final product is... there. The cap is now spring-loaded. Um, I'm not really sure why that was necessary. I kind of liked it the way it was, but I suppose maybe this would be useful in case you really wanted a spring-loaded cap, for example. Okay, here you have the pen next to a Lamy Safari, so you can see it's just a tiny bit bigger, and of course it rolls around because it has no clip, um, but that's, that's about the pen. So it's, it's a pretty reasonable size, I would say. So, Urushi available, um, and as an Urushi pen, pretty affordable. Ebonite, well, you can, there are other options to, uh, I mean, other manufacturers who make Ebonite pens, so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, as I said, this is mainly meant to show you the final product, right? In the most cost-effective manner, I suppose, and that makes perfect sense to me. Let's cover the parts of the pen. Top of the cap, nothing. Same material as the rest of the, pretty much, everything else in the pen. Cap. Tapers down, I guess, would we call this cigar shaped? Maybe more torpedo shaped. Um, cap is not entirely flush with the barrel. Uh, it sticks out just a tiny bit, but I think it's kind of nice on this model. It, it, it looks balanced to me. Barrel, tapers down, rounds up, and at the end you have this little round bit. Spring-loaded cap. Simple section, tapers down, flares out a little bit, and I'm pretty sure these nibs are Yovo, Yovo nibs. Uh, the Wancha logo is on the nib. Uh, this is a uh, uh, 14 karat, so it says 14K585 for the gold content. B, abroad, 
I like the Wanger logo. It is laser engraved, but it looks kind of neat. Uh, simple plastic feed. And then you have the converter, which I will say does not look like the world's most fancy converter uh, to me. But it is a converter and it hasn't broken down, so it's doing its job. Of course, the I'm sorry for my sniffling, guys. I'm recovering from a cold. Uh, I'm almost there, don't worry. Of course, the cool thing with this would be some sort of eyedroppering, but then you have these metal threads. So I would not recommend that. Um, which is a shame, because that would add interesting uh, feature to this pen, but then again, for the price, you know, simple cartridge converter. Who really cares? It's easy to clean. This pen does not post. You cannot, I mean, I can sort of force the cap on there, but it's not meant to be posted. So I would not recommend uh, doing that. Okay, let's do a bit of writing. Let me zoom out a bit for you. And there we go with the Wancher Dream Pen, Waterman Green and Broad 14K Nib. Nib is uh, pretty smooth. It's not the absolute smoothest nib I have ever used in my life, but it's it's definitely not scratchy. Uh, also seems to have a, a pretty good ink flow. I don't really, in this fast writing, see a whole lot of skipping. There may be a little bit there and maybe a tiny bit there, but overall I think it's pretty good. Wetness. As I said, pretty good. Not a gusher, not super dry, pretty nicely tuned. As always, very, very careful, but line variation, uh, I can squeeze out a little bit, um, but as I said, be careful, it's not advertised as being a flex nib. Reverse writing is possible. You definitely go from, I would say, a broad to an extra fine, but it also gets a lot lighter as you write, because it is smooth, I will say that, and I don't have the feeling it dries out very quickly, uh, but it's definitely a lot drier, so this may only work with very dark inks. Okay. The end of the writing part. Let's see what I like about it, and what I don't like about it. Here's Wencha! Sorry. <clears throat> so, what do I like and dislike about this pen? Uh, of course I'm wearing a black shirt, so I'm very sorry. I try to hold this up to my pale face. Uh, there's also less hair every day, it seems, so there's definitely some space to hold this up. Um, now, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, there's actually quite a couple things to like. Is it super cheap? No. Let's face it. Two, three hundred dollars, uh, four fifty for the Arushi, it's not cheap, but it's relatively cheap. Given that the average Arushi pen, I would say, would set you back at least a thousand bucks. Maybe you can get something a bit less expensive, like the, the Platinum Izumo. That is probably street price about 680, 685 US. So it can be a little cheaper, but a lot of the Japanese Arushi pens, especially the slightly bigger ones, um, the slightly bigger ones, are, are expensive. They, they're expensive. And I think what, what Wancher is doing with trying to make this type of pen available to a larger audience is very, very cool. So I like that. Cartridge converter filling system, hey, it's simple. But the more I use pens, the more I start to like cartridge converter filling systems because they're easy to clean and the only movable part is in the converter. And if the converter breaks, you flick out the converter and you buy a new converter for seven dollars or something and your pen works again. With a piston filler, that can be a problem. I love my Omas Paragon, but with Omas out of business, if anything breaks in that piston, who's gonna fix it, right? So in that regard, the cartridge converter pen is not that bad. And I too, in the past, have sung praises of piston fillers, but the more I think about it, the more I'm coming back from that, to be honest. Cartridge converter, easy to clean, not a lot of moving parts, very simple, and that's all. Having said that, it would be really cool if you could use this pen as an eyedropper, but with the metal threads, I don't think you should. 
The pen works, the section is comfortable, these big threads are not very sharp. Uh, I did have one and that's a slightly more serious issue. There is an inner cap in this cap. Oh my goodness, I can actually show it for once because it's quite bright out. The light is coming in exactly the right angle. Choirs of angels start to sing. Hallelujah, etc. I'll end there. This inner cap has a tiny gap between the inside of the outer cap and the outside of the inner cap. What's the problem? That the nib gets snagged. And at some point I tried to cap the panel and I thought, what? Oh, ooh. And I carefully took it out. Unfortunately, the nib was not damaged. But I'm pretty sure that spring-loaded or not, if you do this hard enough or you yank out the pen or you put it in there and you bend it up by accident, uh, you can definitely demolish your nib or at the very least bend it, uh, bend the nibs. Sorry, bend the tines. And that's the problem. I don't really see the issue of why we need a spring-loaded cap at all. It's such a simple design, I would say don't make it any more complicated than it needs to be. I don't remember the prototype having a spring-loaded cap, and it was just so... I just... there we just, you know... there we go. It just actually got snagged. So that is the issue. You have to be... You have to be careful capping that. There's also an issue, which is that these threads are actually quite wide, so they cross-thread fairly easily. And of course, when you try to do it, you can't reproduce it, but... There got, the nib got snagged again. I've had this pen kind of not close a couple of times because the threads were not aligned. There you have it. We're not aligned 100% properly and you can see now that the cap tapers up or, or, or moves up just a tiny bit because these threads are cross-threaded. So, as always, the simple solution is move it away from the direction you're trying to screw it into and then screw it back in and it should be fine. But it's just small annoyances. Right? And these things can happen, it's okay, it's not earth-shattering or a terrible issue. Um, I just think it's, it's a little bit frustrating. Now, having said that, sip of water. Having said that, I know this is ebonite, but if you buy the Arushi for 450 US, I really don't think that's that bad, because I don't know of other Arushi pens that are actual Arushi and that are at that price. So in all, I think you're actually getting a pretty sweet deal with this. And I'm sure that is why this Kickstarter was so incredibly popular. You get a good deal, and people want that. Nice pen, very simple design, understated elegance. I find this very Japanese, very simple, very elegant. It works, the nib writes very nicely, and even though this is Ebonite, you can get an Arushi for a pretty, pretty affordable price. I think it's a win-win situation cap snags and cross threads notwithstanding, I think you'll manage. For that price, you'll manage. Especially given what it is, right? Arushi and all that. So, there you have it. A kind thank you to Wancha for sending me the pen. I appreciate it. Guys, I hope this was useful. Useful to see the final product. And that's all there's to it. I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.